Hey, listen. Don't take yourself too serious. That's the lesson there. The question today is, do I need an email list? Do I need an email list? Let's talk about that for a moment. So I'm going to talk with you five reasons why you need an email list. And actually, there's a bonus reason at the very end that's probably the most important reason why you should have an email list. So I previously just did a video about customer, how to, uh, what is customer lifetime value and how to increase customer lifetime value. And I talked about creating relationships with your customer. Your email list is going to be one of your best ways to foster a relationship with a lot of customers all at once. Now, let me just talk about this for a moment. There's a lot of different reasons why businesses would have an email list and every business should have an email list. I don't care if you're just a normal mom and pop. Do you see that? There's something in front of my eye. I don't care if you're just a normal mom and pop business, like you have a, a florist, for example, and you're like, I don't really do anything online. You absolutely should have an email list. Now, if you start trying to research like email marketing and stuff like that, you'll hear things about, you know, collecting emails from people that aren't even customers yet. And then eventually learning how to cultivate those relationships to create customers. I'm going to tell you for now, if you're just getting started, don't worry about that at all. Create an email list initially just for your customers. If, in other words, if you have a store, the people that's already in your store. Now, what about, you might be saying, but Jackie, I don't have a business yet. I'm, you know, I, I want to learn how to start a business. I want to learn how to make money. I've got something for you towards the end of the video, so don't miss that. One of the biggest reasons, reason number one, we'll just go there. Reason number one why you need an email, email list, it is a very proactive way to bring in business or to bring in revenue to your business. Here's the thing. A lot of traditional brick and mortar businesses, especially smaller business, mom and pop type businesses, your small landscape company, the small contractor service, they don't have an email list. And the challenge with that is they don't really have a proactive way to be able to bring people into their business. I'll share it with you uh, an example. So I was consulting with a cigar shop owner. He had a great business. He had a downtown area. He had a, a good group of people that came in. A lot of regulars came in. I mean, he was doing a booming business for that cigar shop for that area. And I asked him one day, I said, what, how do you, if the economy takes a tank, how do you get more customers into your business? And he was like, I don't know. What do, what do you mean? And I was like, well, how do you, if you decide you want to run a promotion or run a sale, how do you let them know? And he's like, I don't know. And he had been in business for several years at that point. And I said, do you have an email list? And he was like, no. And I remember telling him that you need an email list. And all of you need an email list for that reason. You want to have a way that you could literally type up an email and boom, potentially get customers coming into your store that specific day even. Like that day, you can write an email in the morning and by that afternoon, you're going to have customers coming in. Maybe even that morning when they see the email, they'll be coming into your store. It is one of the easiest pride ways to basically reach out and grab your customers and bring them in. Let them know there's a promotion going on. Let them know that something's taking place. Let me back up. People are going to say, how do you get the email? How do you get their emails? It's super simple. If you have a traditional brick and mortar business, it's just a matter of having a, some place in your store where they can have set up a little iPad or whatever. May, you don't, don't overthink this. There's all sorts of complicated ways to do stuff. I'm a low tech kind of guy. I'm all about how to build business without technology, use as little technology as possible. So th this is one area where it's like, just keep it low tech. If you have a simple iPad in the store or something like that, all you have to do is just, I'll show you how to set up a form in another video. In the next video, I'm actually going to show you this, how to set up an autoresponder account. And I'm going to show you how to set up a little simple form. They can just punch in their email, click submit. They're good to go. And you can say, hey, everyone who, who signs up for our email list is going to get a, a coupon for 5% off their next visit. And I'll even show you how to do that in the next video. If you have an online business, it's just as simple as putting a little form on your website or have your webmaster put a small form on your website to be able to, you know, to be able to, and there's two ways to do it on a website. You can just do it on the side somewhere or there can be like a drop down menu that comes up. And all you have to do is just have it where they can just put in their email address. It's just that simple. If you don't have a website, don't even worry about that part yet. You don't need a website to set up an email address. I'll get to that. I wanted to get kind of some of that housekeeping stuff out of the way. The number one two reason why you need an email list is because it's such a strong leverage point. It, it's a matter of taking one email, typing in one email, and being able to send it out to 
one person or 100 people or 100,000 people and you only type one email. And, and with autoresponders, you can even customize it so it have their name on it. So it will read as if it came directly to them. They won't know if they're one of 100,000 and they shouldn't. You always, that's a tip, ninja tip, always write your emails as if you're talking just, just to that one person. No one feels special if they feel like your message is going to a whole bunch of people. Hey guys, don't do that. Hi John, how are you doing today? Whatever, just wanna give you a heads up. In the store, we're doing X, Y, and Z today. Or starting next week at five o'clock, we're gonna be doing X, Y, and Z. Or when we open, you know, Monday morning, you know, we have this promotion running for two days only. Just want to give you a heads up. Don't want you to miss it. Something along those lines would work simple. The other reason that, you, wait a minute, let me back up. Not only is it a good leverage point, it's a great way to get your message out there. You should not be emailing and always just be pitching. In fact, I recommend two or three emails that are like informational versus one email that's like a pitch if you were going to put a ratio on it and everybody gets caught up on exactly what I should do if you need to know exactly what to do three emails just give value educate one email pitch and alternate that way if you need to but I'm going to tell you that it's really not about having a hard and fast rule in fact I'll tell you that it's better to send pitches regularly you know every day or twice a week or three times a week it's better to do that than not email them at all so as long as you're doing something, you're going in the right direction. Don't overthink it. You'll get better at it. Don't, don't be nervous about sending an email the first time. You'll get better at it. The number three reason, email still has the highest conversion. We're in a social media world. In some ways, I always say that email was the original social media. In fact, the telephone was the three-way call was the original social media. It's how you connect it with more than one person at one time. When it comes to so, uh, someone making a decision to make a purchase, the absolute highest conversion, conversion being no purchase to purchase, no customer to becoming a customer, the highest conversion is in-person. An in-person presentation, an in-person demonstration, an in-person seminar, an in-person you know, coming into your store and buying something over the counter, that is the highest. There is nothing that will replace that in-person connection. That Nothing. I mean, it's, it's astronomically higher than every other form of conversion that exists in marketing. The next highest conversion is over the telephone. A real person, one-on-one -on -one, over the phone. That is the next highest conversion. And phone conversations have an average of like a 17% conversion to a sale on average in, in the industry. Now, with that being said, email is the next highest. Not a Facebook post not a Twitter post, not a post on Instagram, email. And there's probably a lot of reasons for this. I find that one thing that's in common with these conversions I'm talking about is the more personable, the more messageable, if that's a word, the more you can kind of communicate and the more that someone can hear and feel your intent. In other words, it's easier to build a relationship talking to someone on the phone than it is just trying to talk through text, for example. And that's another thing. Text messages get read often, they don't con convert to sales nearly as much as emails, not yet, according to the latest data. So you need an email list. By the way, the bonus tip, I keep seeing it down here, it's probably the biggest tip of all. So I'm going to get to that one here in a minute. Number three was it has, a high, one of the, it has the highest conversion that has a leverage point. It's the highest conversion outside of face-to-face -face conversation. It's the highest conversion outside of one-on-one -on -one conversation, email marketing, email messaging, to your list so you want an email list and it's not even so important about how big the email list in the beginning if you have to just make it about your customers if you already have customers just make the email list about your customers and make sure you add all of your e customers to an email list if you're starting a brand new business it's really simple just let them know hey go to this website or tonight i'm going to shoot you over an email click on the link in the email so you can get added to my customer list don't call your email list I get added to my customer list. So if anything's going on, if you're a landscaper, if anything's going on, if there's inclement weather, I can email my customers. Now, there's a whole lot of you out there that have had people come and cut your grass or cut your lawn. How many of them have never, ever emailed? Like it rains and you're like, I wonder if they're coming by today. I don't really know. And you wouldn't know unless you call them because they probably don't call you to tell you. And one reason they don't call you is because they have a lot of customers. And they don't want to take the time to call every customer one by one. What if you just got a short email? Hey, just want to let you know, because of the weather today, we're not going to be able to get to all of our clients and all of our customers. We're really sorry. We're going to go to the ones that are the closest to us 
so we can get through them the fastest. And we hope that we make it to you. But if for any reason you don't see us today, just know that we're doing our best to get caught up and you will see us within the next couple of days. Like how refreshing would that be? And you're trying to figure out, you know, when the grass is going to get cut, for example. Let me go ahead and tell you, take that as a pro tip if you're a landscaper because nobody does that. Number four, reason number four, you don't have to worry about social media changes. You don't have to worry about whether your business page, which happened a few years ago, you know, all of a sudden your business page is no longer showing up in your customers' news feeds unless you spend money to pay for boosting the, the post, for example. You don't have to worry about those changes you can't control. You don't have to worry about the Twitter algorithm no longer showing your customers your newsfeed. You don't have to worry about Instagram changing. You don't have to worry about YouTube changing. You don't have to worry about any of the social media platforms changes, Snapchat, whatever. You don't have to worry about those platforms changing their algorithm and now all of a sudden your message isn't getting to your customers. Email, email can change. Yahoo and, and, and Gmail and all those, not the, the autoresponder service, but your actual emails can change. It's a harder for a business who sends out an e uh, a marketing message to a, a lot of customers. It's a little bit harder to go into people's inboxes now, but you'll still get there. You'll still get there. In fact, here's the thing. You have some of your highest read rates of all of your messages. I mean, if you have a good email list, it's not unusual to be able to get 20% of your customers to actually get your email and open it. That's 20% within 24 hours, by the way. Now, there, you, it may get a little bit higher over a day or two after that, but 10 to 20 plus percent, 22 percent, 25 percent of your customers. And if you thought it was going to be 100, I'm sorry, 100 percent of people will never open your email. Have you ever got email that you didn't open? That's just normal. However, I'm going to give you some tips on how to have a really high open rate when I show you how to set up an email autoresponder in the next video. By the way, an autoresponder just means it's a, it's a service that you use to create your email list is all it is. And you have to use an autoresponder service to be able to do that. That's the easy way, the non-tech way, the cheapest way. Here's the other reason why you want to use an autoresponder. Reason number five, before we get to the bonus tip. The number five reason why you want to use an autoresponder is because it's cheap. It is absolutely one of the cheapest ways that you can proactively communicate with your customers. What do I mean by proactive? If someone, in order for someone to see your Facebook message, most of the time they have to go to Facebook and probably have to go to your Facebook business page if they want to make certain they don't miss anything. So the customer has to do it on their own. With email marketing, it's just like if you were to call the customer. If you call them on the phone, you're going to reach out to them. Email marketing is one of the least expensive ways, especially when it comes to scale. If your customer base ever grew to like 10,000 people, email marketing is one of the least expensive ways to be able to reach your customers in real time with time sensitive information that you want them to know about. So by far, it's one of the least expensive ways. I mean, you can set up an, an autoresponder service. In fact, the one I recommend um, is Aweber. I'll tell you why towards the end of the video, but you can click on a link down in the description and set up an Aweber an Aweber autoresponder account right now. Um, I'm going to give you a full tutorial on how to do that in my very next video, but if you want to get a head start, you can do it right now. And I, I, Aweber is less than $30 a month starting out, depending on how big, how many, you know, how many customers you're going to need, but start out small, start at the smallest amount because you can always, as your customer list grows, they're just going to, you know, increase the billing by every, you know, but it doesn't increase until you get way into the hundreds, like thousands you know, first 1500 or a thousand before the price ever increases, then it goes up like 10 bucks for another thousands. So it's, it's, it's a very inexpensive way to be able to communicate proactively with your customers, with your clients. Every business on the planet should have an email list. I can't stress that enough. Every business. The one I like to use, the one I do use is down in the description. It's Aweber. I think they're running a promotion right now where the, the first month is free or it's only a dollar. You can check that out. If it's still running, you can go ahead and click on that in the description. The absolute bonus reason, the, the probably the biggest reason, and by the way, after this, I'm going to share with you, with you what to do if you don't have a business yet. If you're looking to start a business, should you have an email list? I'm going to talk about that. So here's the thing. The single biggest reason you should have an email list by far is because it's a, it's a very valuable asset, meaning if you ever decide to sell your business or... If you decide to close your business and open another business, you are never going to start at square one. If, if you go to sell your business and they know that you have a, a customer list of, you know, 10,000 customers in the city, you've been open for 20 years and, you know, you got this customer, you got this email list of 10,000 customers. That's a big deal. By the way, your customers can unsubscribe from your email list at any point in time. That means you've got 10,000 people willing to get your messages. 
that you can easily email, communicate with, that know and like you, that you have a relationship with, at least through email, that that is huge, huge. And, and any business who buys a business and they know that you have an email list, that email list alone has a value. In fact, you literally can take that email list if you wanted to. It's a separate asset potentially from your business. You can literally sell that to someone else. You could sell that. If you went out of business, even if you didn't sell your business, let's just say you're like, uh, you know, the business didn't work. We're in the hole, but we've got this email list of, you know, 2,000 customers. You literally can take that. That is worth money. Now, how much money it's worth is going to depend on the industry, the business, et cetera. But one of your competitors would probably buy your email list from you. Literally, they would probably buy your email list from you. So that is, that's, that's important. I don't recommend you buy an email list unless you know for a fact that it's a competitor that did a good job and they're going out of business. If you buy a business and they have their email list and they don't know to negotiate that into the price and they just are throwing in the email list, that is a huge win for you. Like that is huge. I talked to a lady today who has a, a small like kind of a catch-all store. In fact, she said to me, it's like Walmart, just a lot smaller. Well, she, one of the things she's having to do is she's actually having to liquidate her store. She's liquidating the whole store. She's in the red. She's relaunching her business. She's going with brand new inventory, probably a little more focused with her inventory. If she had an email list, and I don't think she did, does, but if she had an email list, it would be so easy for her to email her customers and say liquidation sale. That's the first thing. Selling all inventory, it must go. Clearing out all overstock inventory, liquidation sale. First of all, she, what she's probably going to do is put a sign up in the front of the store, which means if her customers don't pass by the store, they're not even going to know that. They're not even going to know why there's a liquidation sale. See, in an email, she can say, hey, we're having a liquidation sale. She can say things like everything's going to be 50% off. Everything's going to be 80% off, 90% off, or up to 90% off. Totally doing an overhaul on our inventory. So all of our current inventory has to go. We're relaunching a brand new line of inventory, for example. Like if you said that, that's far more effective for your customers to come in than it is just to put a sign up that says liquidation sale. So that's one example of how that email list is very beneficial. Here's the other thing. When she launches that new business, chances are there's going to be some capital spent, some money spent to get that new inventory in. She's going to want to let people know that the inventory's in. The day that it's in, day one, hey, she can send an email and say, hey, just want you to know that we are having our grand opening you know, Monday the 18th or whatever. And then when the, the grand opening rolls around a couple days before, just a reminder, in two days, we're excited. We've got our grand opening. We've got this in. We've got that in. Super excited. Thank you for all of you who have supported our business over the years. Hope to see you on Monday. That's even, that's huge. So even though her biz, past business could be considered a failure, could be, you know, she's having to liquidate inventory because she's got that email list. If she had an email list, that has value. And, and you should keep your email list of customers. I will go as far as to say, unless you know you're going to retire, you're never, ever going to build a business in your lifetime again. If that's the case, then maybe you sell your email list. But otherwise, I, if I was selling my business, I wouldn't sell my email list ever. I would keep that email list forever. And here's why. It's always an asset you can go to. If you did good by your customers, then they're going to always remember you. They're going to always appreciate you. I know uh, I've got a friend of mine who was a financial advisor, and he went to a, a gentleman that was nearing retirement age, and he ended up having that gentleman buy some of the products from their financial advising firm. And basically, he the guy who had CDs, he'd been saving up for CDs in his entire life. That's all he understood about investing was bank CDs. Well, bank CDs don't pay squat. This guy put him in a really safe, like triple credit, A credit rated um, mutual, um, municipal bond. And that mu municipal bond was paying, you know, two or three times what the CD was paying. And when he, when he left being a financial advisor, and when he left being a financial advisor, later on, he went back to that gentleman and the guy became a customer or client of his for a whole different business. And he went back and asked him, and he shared this with me. That's how I'm able to share with you. He said, I... You were a client of mine in financial services for less than a year. Yet, when I went back to you later, you still became a client again of my new business. Can I ask why? I know you were disappointed that I, I basically was managing your money and then I left. Why did you choose to come back to me? And he said, because son, even though I was disappointed that you were no longer going to be my financial advisor when you left, you, you didn't do me wrong. He said, I, I knew you if you didn't do me wrong once. He said, you changed my financial life. 
by introducing me to these municipal bonds that I didn't know anything about. He said, and I figured if he didn't do me once, he didn't do me wrong the first time, there's no way he's going to do me wrong the second time. See, it's the relationship. Everyone should have an email list. Now, Jackie, I'm, I'm brand new in business or, or I'm trying to start a business. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't even have a business yet. Should I have an email list? As soon as, not until you know where you're headed in what direction, as soon as you know you're going to start building a business, one of the first things you want to do is set up an email list. Your first customer needs to go on that email list. Start with your very first customer. Put them on that email list. Now, there's uh, if you have an online business and, and you wanted to figure all that stuff out, and you know there's ways to set up fancy websites and what they call lead capture pages to grab people's email list. I'm going to show you a simple way to do that. And you can do some, a bunch of marketing and advertising if you know how to do that. Um, and, and that's a whole beast onto itself. And you can do marketing and advertising. You can grow an email list of not customers. You can grow an email list of just people who are looking, just wanting. And, and then ideally cultivate a relationship through email and eventually turn those people into customers. Yeah, that's, a, that's a whole different animal. It's a real thing. That's not what I would recommend to anybody starting a business. That's complicated. You got to figure out what products you're going to market. You got to figure out how to create a website. You got to figure out how to set up a landing page. You got to figure out, figure out, figure out. If you're brand new in business, you want to make money fast. That's what this channel is all about. How to get you started in business and how to help you grow business. I want little guys with good hearts, little gals with good hearts to become very wealthy people with good hearts. So the thing is that my advice to anyone is keep business simple. Keep business simple. If you want more simple tips about growing business, you want to learn more education about expanding your business, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that thumbs up icon. If you want to learn exactly how step-by-step step, you see a full tutorial on setting up an AWeber email list, it's very simple. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification icon. Set it to all because you're not going to want to miss my very next video. Thank you so much for watching.